Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of NASCOM Insights Analyst Assemble. I am Achyuta Ghosh, Insights Head at NASCOM. And today we have with us Rishi Jinjunwala, Senior Vice President, IIFL Securities to discuss the Q2 FY24, June to September 2023 uh, quarter Indian public tech sector company results and also share his expectations for Q3 FY24, October to December 2023 quarter. Welcome to the show, Rishi. Thank you, Ajit. So, Rishi, just getting down to some of the discussion points, uh, the first section is more focused on the analysis of the last quarter results, uh, Q2 FY24 results. Um, what were you, what were the expectations and an actual performance? What was the difference between those two? Sure. So, uh, you know, 2Q, if you really look at it, is um, seasonally the best quarter of the annual cycle, mm -hmm. given that the budget spending is at its peak typically and so everyone expects that uh, um, growth in 2Q will accelerate over 1Q which would have accelerated over 4Q of the previous year. Um, but that is not how it turned out to be. Mm -hmm. uh, 1Q was relatively weak and on the back of that also despite a weaker base or a favorable base, 2Q also turned out to be um, you know reasonably tepid. So, um, um, you know, versus our expectation or hope that uh, 2Q will see acceleration in IT spending, which will then ensure that full year uh, growth expectations are relatively met, it turned out to be a relatively weaker quarter. Agree. And I, I completely agree that uh, every year we have seen Q2 providing the necessary impetus for the tech industry to really yeah. perform well in a particular year and it did not happen this year. Uh, what were key demand drivers uh, in Q2 that you saw? Any key verticals that stood out, geographies, customer segments? Sure. So I think um, uh, from a demand perspective, it still continues to be driven by uh, verticals. Um, specific verticals continue to face pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. It includes uh, at the top, it is um, the high tech and TMT vertical, which faces the maximum pressure followed by BFSI. Mm -hmm. We have seen weaknesses in retail and some of the other sectors as well. What stood out in terms of supporting growth um, have been the manufacturing uh, vertical and within that most specifically uh, spending around autos and aerospace which are in a structural, structurally better growth cycle. Um, apart from that, some of the more defensive sectors like healthcare and life sciences, uh, insurance and travel um, in, the, in the after effect of the pandemic has been doing relatively well. So these are the verticals which are driving growth, um, whereas um, um, you know the bigger verticals which are typically a bigger spenders of IT have been the ones which have been modest. Thanks, uh, thanks for pointing out uh, on manufacturing. Interestingly, we did an analysis on uh, uh, top uh, you know manufacturing organizations and their IT spend over the last three years. What we have seen is that uh, it's gone up by almost 87 percent as compared to what it was in 2021 between 2021 and 2023. So, um, uh, great point. Um, any standout deals and contracts that you saw uh, that uh, some of the companies signed up this quarter? Sure. So, uh, uh, you know, the biggest standout was uh, from one of the larger uh, um, cap companies, Infosys, which mm -hmm. declared that they have won five mega deals. Mm -hmm. um, they had a quarter with overall um, deal TCV or large deal TCV of more than seven billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a record quarter um, in terms of deal wins. We haven't seen any other company announcing so many mega deals in a single quarter, which are new. Mm -hmm. um, but not just them, we have seen um, in general large deal activity remaining fairly solid across the board. Uh, other large caps have also announced the same, even companies which have otherwise had a relatively weaker revenue growth have also been able to announce a fairly large amount of deal wins, whether it be um, Wipro as well um, and, and TCS and HCL continue to do the same also. So I think the large deal activity remains fairly solid. Um, it's the smaller deals, the, um, you know, the renewal run, -up, run of the mill deals where activity has slowed down. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the existing businesses are not able to grow as fast as um, you know one was expecting it to um, whereas some of these large deals will potentially um, you know help uh, um, you know offset some of the weaknesses in the coming quarters right and also for the large deals i think conversion remains an issue right uh, conversion to actual revenues absolutely so while you know uh, overall macro uncertainty is leading 
a lot of corporates towards inaction and even though the deal activity continues because large deals take you know anywhere between 12 to 18 months to fructify from the time um, you know any corporate decides to do that right. and the RFP process and then finalization and everything else so um, you know while the deal activity continues on the large and mega side um, the potential ramp up is going to be um, is going to take a lot more time than how it has historically been where typically it used to take three to six months now we are seeing more than six months on an average where large deals are getting ramped up great um, hiring uh, uh, Rishi you know uh, people are not talking much about it because we have seen uh, overall employee based uh, decline in a couple of companies right but what's really happening on that front and are there any key skills that are still in demand where people are struggling to uh, make ends meet Sure. So firstly on overall hiring, clearly uh, you know fiscal 22 and 23 saw significant amount of hiring. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was preemptive pre because you know companies expected the demand trends to continue and not slow down at the pace at which it has. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these companies are sitting on bench uh, where utilization is still relatively low versus historical highs. And as a result, the net hiring in the industry has slowed down. Mm -hmm. um, attrition also has come down from, you know, the industry at an average of 25 to 30 percent to now close to about 10 to 14 percent. In some cases, it has gone down to even single digits. So there is a significant uh, slowdown or easing of supply side because of which net hiring activity has also taken a big pause. Right. Um, and that you know correlates with the fact that volume growth in general has been uh, fairly weak off late. So no reason for hiring to pick up even in the next one or two quarters but hopefully if FY24-5 were to grow at uh, you know high single digit then we'll again see hiring pick up happening. As far as uh, niche skills are concerned I mean last one one and a half years were all about Gen AI. Um, and so there has been significant pickup in demand for people who are uh, skilled, not purely in Gen AI because that is still under evolution, but overall AI, data analytics and some of these, uh, you know, um, skills where uh, demand continues to remain high. Um, some of the vertical specific demand is also high in areas such as GRC, risk compliance and all those um, um, kind of spaces uh, where domain specialists are needed. But outside of that, uh, for the more traditional skills, I think uh, uh, it is a lot easier to hire people now versus what it used to be say two years ago. No, a great point and good that you highlighted AI because uh, we do an annual compensation uh, survey every year with Deloitte and that also showed that if you are, uh, if you have AI skills, your compensation levels are at least 40-50% higher than um, the average mm -hmm. person out there. So it's quite, uh, you know, lucrative. At the same time, there is a, a huge demand supply gap when it comes to AI in India uh, as compared to other technologies. So, um, you know, massive demand. Um, moving on quickly to uh, any company strategic shifts that you saw this, this quarter. I mean, did companies do something out of the usual from a go-to-market perspective, solution building, partnerships, anything that stood out uh, that you would like to mention? Yeah, I mean, and, and it, this is just an extension of what we were just discussing. Yeah. We saw us, you know, a number of companies uh, uh, announcing partnerships with, um, uh, you know, global corporates which are actually uh, at the front end of adoption of GI, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gen AI, uh, whether it be NVIDIA, which is supposed to be the largest and the only player to be able to provide mm -hmm. um, you know chips for adoption of uh, Gen AI and uh, we saw a lot of companies including Infi, TCS and others announcing collaborations with uh, some of these uh, mm -hmm. you know front end Gen AI companies mm -hmm. which will eventually help all these IT companies to play their role in the second half of the uh, disruption cycle when large scale implementation of Gen, Gen AI might be required right. So, that is one thing which is clearly coming out. Um, over the past three years, a lot of the partnerships were driven by, um, you know, uh, collaborating with hyperscalers mm -hmm. um, for uh, being able to generate more revenues around cloud implementation. Um, but in the last one year, we have seen a shift towards partnerships and collaborations towards N AI and Gen AI. And uh, you will potentially see that uh, accelerate over the next 12 months as uh, you know the evolution in Gen AI plays out. 
um, in the broader markets. So that is one of the key um, you know areas. Otherwise, um, uh, the other interesting thing that is happening is there is a lot of management changes that are happening at um, you know Indian IT outsourcing vendors. And uh, while um, you know those changes are happening today, they will lead to you know a lot of um, strategy changes by all these corp uh, you know vendors over the next 12 months, 18 months. You will see companies coming out with their strategic roadmap, some of the initiatives that they want to take, um, some of the areas in which they want to invest and focus a lot more. Um, and uh, that will that will be very interesting to watch out for on a company specific basis. I agree, and a lot of the things that we've seen in the last six months uh, may not be long term, maybe on an ad hoc basis, but we'll probably see some of the long term strategies come out, uh, especially in the wake of Gen AI. Yeah. Um, any challenges that we did not cover up till now uh, that you saw in last quarter, Rishi? Sure. So I think um, if we just look at um, if we if we segregate the Indian IT exports into mm -hmm. the ones done by the third party outsourcing vendors like InfiTCS and the other one being um, you know done by captives or GCCs mm -hmm. as as two buckets, then clearly we are also witnessing increasing uh, work being shifted to the GCCs as well. This may not necessarily be a market share loss to the Indian IT companies wherein the work has been taken from IT companies and given to GCCs. There have been anecdotes of that happening but not at a widespread level. But incrementally more and more work is also going to the GCCs. So um, you know that takes away some part of potential growth opportunity that the Indian IT companies could, would have been able to capture otherwise. So I think that will be a key challenge uh, to manage or navigate through. Uh, we have seen these cycles play out in the past as well, so this is nothing new for the for the sector, and we expect that um, you know some of this will start normalizing in a year or two. Um, apart from that, I think demand remains the only challenge mm -hmm. um, uh, for for these companies. They are relatively well positioned now when it comes to supply side, when it comes to the fact that immigration risks are no more potent enough as it used to be five years ago when. That was one of the biggest challenge or risk for the Indian industry, but that's not the case given um, the COVID pandemic has uh, made that paradigm shift in terms of companies or at least corporates accepting the fact that there can be more work that can be done from offshore locations like India. And so some of those immigration challenges have also subsided in a big way. Mm -hmm. So demand remains a challenge, but that's in our view a lot more cyclical. Mm -hmm. um, currency will be a challenge and it is always a wild card. But of course, at this point of time, the Indian currency has been very stable and there's no reason for it to um, you know, move in either direction in material way. So hopefully that will not come out as a, as a risk. And, and so all the focus will remain around around demand, around how some of these new disruptive technologies play out. Right. Um, moving on to uh, expectations for next quarter, uh, Rishi, and anyways for FY25 also, if in case you have some certain thoughts in mind. Uh, and we want to cover macro uh, environment, we want to cover uh, the demand environment. You did cover that uh, in the previous question also. And then expectations from the industry. Uh, what do you think, uh, how do you think this quarter, this December quarter will pan out? and the rest of the year and then next year. Um, what's your take on that? Sure. So I think 3Q is seasonally one of the weaker quarters because, you know, at the in the December month there are furloughs. Less number of billing days, yeah. That's number of billing days yeah. uh, being lower because corporates, you know, employees at corporate level go on holiday, mm -hmm. especially in developed markets um, in the second half of December. So seasonally the quarter is typically weak. Um, however, it comes on the back of relatively stronger 1Q and 2Qs, mm -hmm. uh, which has not happened this time. Mm. But based on the intelligence that we could gather, not just from um, you know our companies, but also channel checks across uh, industry experts, what we are learning is 3Q is going to remain a fairly weak quarter with no sign of um, any material pickup in demand. Mm -hmm. And volume growth is going to remain challenging. In fact, uh, some of the companies are also talking about furloughs which will be higher than last year and also higher than what they were expecting at the beginning of the quarter. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that um, 3Q will potentially pan out to be again um, a relatively muted quarter from a demand perspective or from a growth perspective. That is also a reflection of how you know macro is where there is a lot of uncertainty even now. Mm -hmm. 
um, and that should ideally play out in terms of uh, the performance for the tech industry also. Right. I think uh, uh, not a lot of good news viewers, uh, but thank you for your insights, Rishi. Um, uh, NASCOM Insights actually puts together a quarterly analysis of tech company results. The download link to the last quarter results is available in the description box below. Uh, so please go and check it out. Uh, do like and subscribe to our channel and smash the bell icon to get notified once a new video drops.